What's up guys, Brad here from Piney Grove and today we're gonna to start a project that I've been wanting to do for probably a couple years. We built our mega shed here three years ago and it's built on a pile of dirt that we dug from our pond. And right here in the front, and I'm walking across here to show you, this is all pond clay from our pond and when we get a little bit of rain, this turns into a sticky, gooey, soupy mess and we can't get the equipment out of the mega shed. So what I wanna to do today is come in here with the box blade on the L3901 and also have the excavator warming up in the background is carve this out so it has a consistent slope coming from the concrete down there to where it will be graveled. Leave a comment down below if you don't think this is a good idea. My thought process is this is on a slope and as I'm pulling things in and out of the mega shed here, I'll slip on loose gravel. So we're gonna put down this geo cell um, lamps Escaping fabric, it creates these pockets, these pockets that are like, I don't know, four inches in diameter. It's a nine by 17 sheet and it's two inches tall and it holds gravel in place. So I'm gonna put three sheets of that across the front of the shed here because that's the area where I think the tires might slip the most coming in and out of the shed. We're gonna start with the box blade and see how this does, but I think it's gonna be a little bit too packed and I'll have to grab the excavator and grub it out first. Yeah, that kind of did what I thought. It is so hard packed clay here and we haven't had much rain in the past week or so. And, in, and even if we did have rain, most of that's gonna wash off here and not soak in. So this is pretty hard packed and dry and that box blade is literally just scraping, I don't know, the top quarter inch or so. I could drop the scarifiers on the front of the box blade so they would rip ahead of the blade behind it and that would help some, but I just think that's not the right tool for the job. And it's, just gonna take too long to do it that way. So I'm gonna jump on the excavator and get in here. I can use the teeth to loosen up the top. And also we wanna get this whole thing along the front of this concrete down about three inches or so. If that geo cell is two inches, I want that buried underneath a little bit of gravel so you don't actually see the black geo cells. So let me grab the excavator and try and rip this up a little. I don't know why, but this whole process makes me nervous. I know I can do it, but I want to get that slope perfect, and I've never done anything like this before. So that's right at four inches right there. So my bucket teeth are four inches from here to here. So I don't need to get it any deeper than that. I ain't gonna lie, I'm a puddle working up next to the mega shed like that. I don't wanna mess up the concrete. I don't wanna overdig it. I just need to settle in and work the machine and it'll all come out fine. I guess my biggest concern is I don't want to make this worse, but it's going to have to be worse before it's better. We've done so much grading here to be able to use this shed by putting all this dirt here and grading it several times and now I'm ripping it all up, but I guess that's probably my, my biggest hang up today is I've got access to the shed and I don't want to lose this. In order to make an omelet, you got to break a few eggs, so I guess that's what we're doing today out here is breaking some eggs. And it's just dirt, right? I can always put it back, pack it in. It's funny how the box blade couldn't really touch this, but this little 24 horsepower excavator, not having any problem at all with it. Let's grab the tractor, scoop this out and see what we got so far. I don't want to over dig it. I carted off most of the dirt and I got this corner cleaned up and I got four inches of exposed concrete along the edge there. So that's, that's almost perfect. And this isn't perfectly flat through here, but it doesn't matter because it'll get filled with gravel. What I want is that fairly flat and then for it to slope down over here. So that part hasn't been done at all. And this little corner has been done. It's going slow, but I think it's gonna work out. I was really worried about, you know, maintaining 
a perfect slope all the way down, but, but it really doesn't matter. As long as I get that ground fabric, those geo cells down up against the shed itself, the rest of this doesn't need to be perfect as far as dirt because the gravel will go on top of it and then you can grade the gravel. One thing I have been worried about, it's my truck and trailer right there because you get going with a tractor and you kind of lose track of what's behind you. So I'm gonna grab the excavator and pluck off a couple of railroad ties that are gonna be used on that end and get that trailer and truck out of there. I've got a bunch of this loosened up here and now I'm going to try and use the blade on the front of the excavator to extend where the excavator is across this tilled area and see if I can get it flat and smooth. Not very good with the blade but I'm going to give it a shot. The trick to the whole blade thing is to keep the excavator on ground that's graded and as you push that will extend that grade into the new area. I feel like the new area is a little more dug out than where the excavator started but I'll check it with the level. a level on the area I've been digging out here and I got good slope I'm about three inches down on the concrete side and it's resting on the the clay side here it's an eight foot long straight two by four and if I pick up that end of it then that would be level so I got good decent slope going from there to there so all that's good what's not good is underneath this board there's you know several inches underneath the board where the dozer blade on the excavator dug in too far. That's what I do a lot when I'm pushing clay is that I'll find areas that I dig in too much and I don't get it level. It's easy enough to fix. I have plenty of good clay here that's crumbly. I'll put it in here and pack it in with the excavator. But that's what I have to do all the way across here. And one thing we did when we poured the concrete to the mega shed here is that we sloped it two inches from the sheet metal right there for the whole 15 foot length of this porch. So we already got a good slope here. So any water that goes on this porch should go onto that gravel that we're trying to create a bed for and then go on down the hill here. If you didn't notice, we not only slope from that way to that way, but we also slope from here to there. And all that water will eventually end up in, a water, in an underground water system. We also collect water here along the edge of the mega shed. You can see the basin right there. And it comes to this basin and then there's underground pipe to where my truck is and there's a basin there all the way down to the pond. I took some of that extra dirt and dumped it in here and backbladed it a little bit with the tractor and I got most of that belly removed underneath that board. That's definitely good enough for gravel. What I didn't want to do was have four inches of gravel somewhere or six inches of gravel. I want like a, you know, three, three and a half inches throughout. It's okay if it's an inch or two off, but that was probably three inches off. That's the part I was most worried about because I knew there was the most digging there. But as I'm sitting there looking across over here where I've already done and trying to extend that plane that way, I'm really liking how it's turning out. We built this building three years ago and I've graded the front of that probably three or four times with the tractor and the box blade but I could never get it right because I didn't have the right machine. We've had Precious Archaic 71-3 excavator for right at two years now, and it's just all the difference in the world when you have the right machine to excavate where you need versus taking the box blade and trying to scrape a little bit when you really need to go down, say, three or four inches. I'm gonna go ahead and use the dozer blade on the front of the excavator to pile this up and then scoop it with the tractor. I could do it all with the tractor, but it's real fun to push with the excavator.
Once I get all that dirt scooped away, the grade's gonna be pretty close. All right guys, I took the excavator and packed that in and I just put a little water on it to keep the dust down and also to do a final grade with the back of the tractor bucket to get it smooth. But it came out really good and it is ready for gravel, at least up there on the bench end. I put the railroad ties here behind me by the electrical box and that'll be that end of the driveway. And then I put the railroad ties on this edge of this hill that goes down to the pole barn in the shop. And they're not dug in or anything, but they are where they're gonna be. And then everything up in there is gonna be all gravel. Now, as far as the gravel coming out here, it'll come out here by the tractor and kind of go in a straight line to the driveway. And then when it gets over here, it'll probably bevel out to make it easier to come in and go out. But all in all, it was a good day. Glad I had the equipment on hand because I needed both the excavator and the tractor to do this job. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Until the next one, y'all take care out there. And remember, life's short. Tractor hard.